All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rachakodash. I want to send double honors to my elders and apostles at Great Millstone that rule well. Peace, love, and salutations always to the elect doing this work and sincerity and truth throughout the four corners, presenting your body as a living sacrifice to do so. So I just want to try to touch on this quick topic of prudence, you know. I don't know, there's a situation, you know, which I'm not going to really go into detail about it, but um, no, just just one thing to know in this truth, this is a growing process. You know, no matter how long you're in this, in this knowledge, you're always going to constantly grow. As it says in the book of First Peter, the third chapter, which I'll grab that, you know, um, if you if you think that when you get into this knowledge and you reach a certain point of wisdom that you're just good, you know, uh, you need to get out of that mindset, man. You know, because the Lord is going to cause us to constantly abound more and more. I want to get that precept in uh, the apocrypha as well. But um, you no, know, first and foremost, let me get prudence. Okay, let me get prudence. So when you get into the word prudent. Or prudence in the Etam online. Okay. It says intelligence, discretion, foresight, wisdom to see what is suitable or profitable, you know, and not all the time while we're a part of this ministry do we do we um find ourselves being prudent. You know, we seek to be prudent. Alright, we, we admire to be prudent because we know that this is a gift of Yahweh Bashmi Shai. Okay, the book of Proverbs says that a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. You know, and, and the, that, that, those are the men that Yahweh Shemel Shai had chosen. He had put that prudence on them to be able to see the things that are coming down the pike. But if you be found without prudence, as it says also in that same verse, but it says the fool goeth into destruction. Okay, so if we're not using prudence, then... And just to, just to say it in a roundabout way, you, you, there's no way that you're going to be prepared for the things that are coming. You know, we have things that are coming down the pipe that we have never seen before in our lives. Uh, we've seen, we seen, um, we seen uh, unruly uh, uh, unruly laws being created by, by the wicked evildoers, the powers that be. Okay? We, we see, uh, well, there's going to be another famine. <laughs> There's gonna be a couple of famines, actually, which we've seen famines before, but you no, know, in the manner that um, they may happen, we've never seen them. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much it. Says a foreseeing, a foresight, sagacity, practical judgment. You know, just just to see ahead. You know, what I'm saying and preparing uh, for what's ahead of you. All right. So a Lord willingness is edifying. I should have said that first and foremost. Um. I'm going to get straight into these scriptures. <clears throat> so this is the book of, uh, let's see. This is the book of 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. It says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, to him be the glory both now and forever. You know, so this is always, always room to grow, man. There's always room to uh, improve on your prudence. You know, and you, and like I said, if you find yourself in a situation or in the mindset of, oh, I got it, I'm good. You know, the, um, I don't I don't have to uh, to work on this or that. Then ultimately, the most high can destroy you. OK. So let me keep this on deck. All right. So now I'm going to get this precept. Also on the apocrypha. Right. See. All right, so this is the book of Sirach. Let's see if I can pull it up. Right, this is Sirach 43, number 30. Right, it says, when you glorify the Lord, exalt him as much as you can. For even yet will he far exceed, you know, and us using prudence, using the wisdom, the knowledge, and understanding, 
presented unto us using that as glory unto the heavenly father because guess what no glory goes unto us anyway all right you, you know no man is to glory in himself it says when you so any the things that we do in righteousness glorify the lord you know, using prudence all right exhorting the the unwise and the unlearned you know of the truth the the real truth <laughs> you know and i say that you know uh you know because you have a, you have false teachers out here you know, teach the real truth, all right? Telling Jake who they are, telling them the things that are coming, all right? This is all glorifying unto the Lord, man, all right? This is Epher, even yet will he part exceed. And when ye exalt him, put forth all your strength and be not weary, okay? Now, I'm, I'm sure that things in this world that we used to be a part of, we, we you know, uh, we give it all we got. You know, so that's what the Lord requires. Give it, give me all that you have, man. You know, and guess what? And the, all those that, that give everything that they have unto the Lord, these men will be first exalted in the kingdom of heaven, man. Okay, men that are, that are not a uh, um, that are not afraid to look crazy for the for the name of the Lord. All right, these men that that will not um, feel any shame. Uh, in the in the face of men, if we're serving the Lord or doing things that please the Lord, you know, because the things that are that we do, you know, um, which are ancient customs, you know, uh, wearing wearing the garments, you know, uh, hitting you know hitting the streets and, and as as people would say, yelling to the top of our lungs, you know, these things are not new, but in this day and age, where wickedness is at an all time high. Okay, and uh, finally, a certain great dignity. This is looked at as a, um, a awkward act, or or awkward. Um, let me just stick with awkward act, you know, for lack of better words. Okay, but these are things that were written in the scriptures. These are things written for us to to keep from generation to generation and teach them unto our children and their children's children and to our people. Okay, the nation of Israel, right? <clears throat> it says, and when you exalt him, put forth all your strength and be not weary, for you can never go far enough. You can never go far enough pleasing the Lord, man. You know, hey, going, going back into uh, Sirach, the fourth chapter in the 28th verse, it says, strive for the truth unto death and the Lord shall fight for thee. So, you know, so even if it goes as far as you having to lose your life or be a martyr for Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, so be it, you know? That's part. That's what we signed up for, man. All right. For our forefather Paul is a perfect example. Stephen was a perfect example. The ultimate example for uh, dying for the heavenly Father is who? Yahweh Shad, That sacrifice. All right. That lamb slain for the nation of Israel. It's like that nation. Uh, that uh, that lamb slain for the nation of Israel. Okay. And this is this is not something to be taken lightly either, man. No. Um, but let me let me get to this precept that I have. All right. So this is the book of Sirach, and this is this is why I actually thought of uh, this is where this lesson actually conformed from, from this precept here. In Sirach thirty two, <clears throat> Sirach thirty two, and verse fourteen, it said, "Whoso feareth the Lord will receive his discipline, and they that seek him early shall find favor." You know, and you know <laughs> the reason why this led me to going into prudence is this part right here where it says, "And they that seek him early." shall find favor now how do we seek the lord early you know it doesn't say i mean it's not from our young young age four five six no of course because we were not born most of us were not born into this all right you have a small percentage of israelites that are born into this but it says and they that seek him early shall find favor now what is what does uh seeking him consist of like i mentioned finding out who you are all right, knowing that you are uh, the chosen uh, of the chosen nation, the people that the Most High uh, picked to pick for Himself. Okay, knowing with the uh, you know going into your history, going into the prophecies. Okay, and mainly the prophecies because uh, to to go into prophecy requires prudence because you have to prepare for. You know, we're preparing for a a, a, a financial collapse of the system. Okay, we're preparing for uh, different famines, 
we're preparing for uh, unrighteous decrees that may affect us. And we're, we're preparing for them the best way that we can. This is how the Lord is showing favor unto us by allowing us to uh, be in that mindset. You know, to to to, uh, to have the the uh, the foreknowledge uh, of, of things to come, and that we may be hid in in, in His bosom. Okay. So you know, uh, no, just some real quick. That was in my spirit. I had to bring that out. Um. So like, Lord willing, this is edifying. You know, uh, use prudence. You know, and this is something that. Um, you know, me, myself, uh, personally, is constantly building on uh, being more prudent, you know, because there are the most high is not going to show favor unto those who are not showing prudence, okay? If you're not showing prudence, you don't know what the hell's going on. You don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> you know, it, it, it speaks for itself, man. You know, but hey, with that being said, I'm going to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Chakwadash. Double honors to my elders and apostles at Great Millstone. Peace, love, and salutations as always to the elect. Shalom.